Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Got it right. Thank you for uh, the introduction. And uh, it's an honor to be able to uh, preach here uh, with all of you. And uh, for all those of you who are online today, I just want to say that uh, there's no shortage of the presence of God and the power of God. God is uh, there wherever you are. Say amen. Amen. So I, by faith, I believe you have responded that amen. And I want to quickly just go to the word today. Uh, I want to read from the book of a Psalm, Psalm number 84. A few verses in Psalm number 84, and I feel it's important for us during this season that we are all uh, living in. Psalm 84, verse 4 to 7, and then down to verse number 12. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They shall still be praising you. Whether you're in a location where uh, we're doing the recording or in your home, you are blessed because today is the Lord's day. This is the day that the Lord has made. It's blessed. So they will still be praising you, Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, O Lord, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Bacar, they make it a spring. The rain also covers its pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be able to hear your word, for me to share your words. Bless, O God, and anoint me as a speaker and anoint everyone that hears, wherever they are. Lord, may they receive your word with gladness, joy, and may your word bring strength, comfort, and encouragement to them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I want to share for a few minutes today a message called The Valley of a Car. The Valley of a Car, which is taken from Psalm 84, verse number 6. I want to talk about turning our adversities into blessings. All right? How to turn an adversity into a blessing. The valley of a car. Here in the book of Psalm 84, there's so many wonderful truths, so many wonderful things that I can talk about. And because of the time that we have limited today to share with you, I'm not going to go through all the 12 verses with you, even though I want you to just read it on your own because it's just so rich. There's so much in Psalm 84 that can encourage us in this season that we are living in. But I want to take a few verses out of the Psalm 84 and share with us how we can turn our adversities into blessing. The reason why I'm sharing this with you all today and I've chosen Psalm 84 is because there's been so much suffering, so much sorrow, so much difficulties, so much hurts and so much pain that's in the world today that we're living in. Some of you, you're going through uh, tremendous challenges in your life. And I want to encourage you to open your hearts to receive Psalm 84, the sharing of the Word of God to you today. That you may be going through uh, the valley. Some of you are coming out of a valley. Or some of you are maybe, you know, uh, going into one or inside one, or in a deep valley yourself. But I want you to know today that you can find richer relationship with God, a deeper fellowship with God, even down at the valley that you are in. In Psalm 84, here's a picture of worshippers. Uh, we have tremendous worship. Thank God for the musician and the singer. Uh, we have a great worship time. Here it is today. And here's a picture of a worshipper passing through the valley on their way, their journey, to the temple in Jerusalem to worship God together with the rest of the people. They count it a joy. They look forward to be able to go to a physical location to worship God and praise Him 
together. And so in Psalm 84, we have a picture of the worshiper moving through the journey, coming to a place of a valley before they go uphill again to Jerusalem, the temple to worship God. Life is full of hills and valleys. Life is full of ups and downs. You, you know, you don't go from hills to hills. You don't go from mountain to a mountain. You go from hills, valley, hill. Amen. Because you, in order for you to climb to the next hill, you have to descend and then go up again. So here's a picture of a worshiper at the valley called a valley of Baca. A valley is a place of difficulties. Some of you may be facing some challenges and difficulties. Valley is a place of danger. You have got wild animals. You have got, you know, uh, uh, dark shadows. You have, uh, you know, all kinds of things that can appear in the valleys. And it's a very dangerous place. Valleys in the Bible, many times, depict a picture of depression. You know, in this season, there are many people who go through depression. Emotional depression. Not just spiritual, but emotional depression as well. I'm going to share with you how we can come out of a depression. How we can over, come up from a valley and have victory even in the valley and come up victorious. You see the word baka or the valley of baka. Baka means weeping. It means tears. So the valley of baka simply means a, a valley of weeping, a valley of tears, a valley of sorrow and suffering. But you know what? You don't have to dwell in sorrow and suffering the rest of your life. You can make that valley a place of blessing. The Bacar can become a blessing place. You can turn every adversity into blessing. Praise the Lord. I want to quickly share with you three characteristics that I thought about in this uh, message to you this, today. And first of all, the first characteristic is this. That God is with us in times of prosperity and also in times of adversity. Amen? So you can put on the chat command there and say amen and raise your hand. You know, do something. Yeah, come on, engage with us. Don't just watch us, but engage with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the first characteristic I have for us here is that God is with us in time of prosperity and adversity. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse number 9, the Bible says uh, through Moses, and that you may enjoy long life. Amen. You may enjoy long life. I may enjoy long life. Every one of us will enjoy long life in the land the Lord promised to give to your um, to ancestors and your descendants. A life, a land, sorry, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, in order to have a land flowing, continuous flowing, all right, it's a, it's a picture of the believer's life in the Lord Jesus where he promised that, you know, he come to give us life and life more abundantly. The John chapter 10 verse 10 kind of a life, the Zoe life, the abundant life, the eternal life, the overflowing, never, never ending of eternal love of God for us. So in order for us to have a lot of, for them to have a lot of milk flowing in the land, you got to, you got to have a lot of cattles. You got to have cows, you got to have gold give, giving milk. In other words, that place that God promised to bring to them into is a place that's full of richness. It's a rich place. It's a place of wealth and prosperity. Then you talk about honey. Honey is a picture of health, right? We know that people take honey for health reasons many times. And uh, so all kinds of fruits and, uh, you know, that you can get the sweetness from. And so I see a place of uh, prosperity. I see a place of abundance, a place of wealth and health. But then, two verses down, the same chapter in verse 11, it says, but the place that you're going into, which you cross over, verse 11, to possess is a land of hills and valleys. <laughs> right? Verse 11 says, it's a land of hills and valleys which drinks water from the rain of heaven. The land that you're crossing over is not just a land flowing in milk and honey, but it's also a land of hills and valleys. Hills speak of challenges, obstacles. Jesus said, you know, if you have faith, speak to the mountain and 
cast the mountain, cause it to be uh, removed, and it will be removed, right? Speak to the mountain of obstacle. Speak to your mountains of sickness. Speak to your mountain of debts and difficulties. Whatever mountain and obstacle is standing between you and victory today, you have the authority of the Word of God in your mouth to speak to the mountain, speak to the hill. And uh, also the Bible says it's not just a place of a land of hills, but it's also a land of valleys, low places. There are low places that block you from the sunlight and you can see uh, way out and there's a, uh, and then you're trapped in a low place. So valleys, but the valley drinks water from the rain of heaven. Say rain of heaven. <laughs> On the chest, rain of heaven. Rain of heaven. Rain of heaven. You know what? Blessing come back again. You have got hills, you've got valley of difficulties, but the rain of heaven is going to be a shower of blessing from God to us. So I want to say to you that God is with us, no matter whether you are in a time of adversities or of prosperity. This is your season to experience the closeness and the nearness of God, the presence of God for your life. This is the season for you to experience that God is really, really, really with you, close to you, and He is for you. Say Amen. Praise the Lord. The second characteristic I want to share with us is this, that God is not just a God that is with us at all times, but He's also a God who is the God of hills and valleys. <laughs> right? I ex just explained what hills and valleys uh, are. But there's a story in 1 Kings chapter 20. 1 Kings chapter 20 gives us a story of two wars, two battles that were going on. All right? The, the Syrians trying to fight God's people, Israel, and the king at that time is, uh, was King Ahab. The, the first time they fought them was in the hilltop on uh, Samaria. So the Syrian army enemy came and fought the uh, people of God in on the hill slow, uh, hilltop of Samaria. But they lost that war. They lost the fight. So they were all you know, wounded, bandaged up, some killed. And so they all retreated and went, home, went back home. As they went home and they re reorganized themselves and they started thinking, why did we lose that fight? We have got, you know, better army. We have got better trained people. Why did we lose it? Then they realized that, hey, maybe because we've been fighting their God on the hill. Because their God is the God of the hills. And we, when we go up to the hill, we fight them, we will lose. So why not draw them down to the valley? And perhaps the God is not the God of the valley. They will probably lose us in, in the fight. So what they were discussing within themselves in their camp, was overheard by a prophet, a man of God, the Bible says. And the man of God came back to King Ahab, of, uh, the king of Israel, and said to the king, King, we overheard. We heard that they say that the, our God, your God, is not, it's only the God of the hills. You guys can win them in a war because you serve a God of the hills. And then uh, when God heard about this, you know, God got ticked off. <laughs> God also can tick off. <laughs> God, God was angry. God was upset. God said, okay. Because they say that I'm only, they think that I'm only the God of the hills and not God of the valley. I'm going to prove them. I'm going to show them I, the Almighty God, is also the God of the valleys. Amen. So here in verse 28, then a man of God came and spoke to the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God. Verse 28, First King 20, 28. The Lord is God of the hills, but He is not God of the valleys. Therefore, God said, I will deliver all this great multitude into your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. He is the Lord. He is the mighty God of the hills. He is the mighty God of the valley. Amen. Come on. You, uh, you may be on the hill. You may be at the valley, but He's the God all the time to you. In other words, this season... You and I, we're going to experience God's victory and deliverance for our lives. Amen. We're going to experience God's victory who is in the God of the hills, God of the valley. This is our season to see the enemy get defeated. And true to, uh, to it, the enemy, the Syrian, was defeated when they tried to fight God's people at the valley. So they, they were defeated uh, greatly and uh, their king has to surrender to the king of uh, Israel as well. The third characteristic I want to share with us is that our God is not just a God that's with us all the time. 
He's not just the God of the hills and the valley, but He's also the God who is a turnaround God. We serve a turnaround God. Amen. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 5, Nevertheless, the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam, the prophet, <laughs> the false prophet, that was hired by the enemies of Balak, Balak the king, hired Balaam to uh, try to come and curse God's people with a curse. So Balaam tried to curse God's people, and what happened? But the Lord, your God, turned the curse into a blessing for you. I want you to know no man can curse you when God blesses you. God will turn every curse, every sorrow, every pain. He's going to turn weakness into strength for you in this season. God is turning things around for you in this season. He is a turnaround God. <laughs> he turned your sorrow into, uh, into joy, your mourning into dancing. Whatever you've been going through, God is turning the corner for you. And verse uh, John chapter 16 verse 20 says this, Most assuredly I say to you that you would uh, you will weep, Jesus said, and lament, but the world will rejoice. When you go to suffering, the world is going, not going to, uh, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, pity you and uh, compassion on you. They will, they, will, they will mock at you. They will rejoice. But God said you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be what? Turned into joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your sorrow will be turned into joy. I want to give you four keys. Four keys to turn your adversity into blessing. Key number one, rely on God's strength. Not your own. On our own, we have a physical human strength, but that's not enough. We need supernatural strength because we are in a supernatural warfare. We are in a very uh, a, a difficult time. We need God's supernatural strength. Verse 5 in Psalm 84 says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, Lord. Our strength is not in our weapon, physical weapon. It's not in our manpower. It's not in our human resources. It's not in our finances. Our weapon is what? Our strength is in the Lord. You see, the size of your strength needs to be bigger. No, sorry. Uh, the source of your strength must be in the Lord. Okay? The source of your strength has to be in the Lord because if you try to fight with your own strength, you won't make it. Psalm 68 verse 28 Say this, your God has commanded your strength. Show yourself strong, O Lord, who has have, uh, acted on our behalf. God has commanded strength. Whoever you are watching this, I want you to know God today is commanding strength. The words that I've been speaking about, it's going to bring strength to you. My Lord, by the Spirit, is going to command strength into your body right now. If you are weak, if you are sick, He's commanding strength into your body. He's commanding strength into your finances. He's commanding strength into your emotion. You don't have to stay down in depression because God gave you strength to get up. Amen. And get moving, get going because God is God of uh, strength. The Lord is my strength, the psalmist say. He's my deliverer. Who shall I be afraid of? God is my strength. You know, the size of your strength needs to be bigger than the size of your stress and your sorrow. The size of your strength, the capacity that you carry, the anointing that's in you, all right? Now, when you go through a time in the, you know, uh, difficulties, the difficult time, the, the valley you're going through is going to test the strength that you have inside of you, how much strength you have. Now, you can say all kinds of things and boast about all kinds of things that you have. Uh, you're able to do when things are fine and everything is okay. But when you're going through a, uh, adversity, that adversity, that crisis is going to test you, your strength. Okay. So the, the, the size of your strength is important. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 say, If you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you fail, if you give up, in the day of adversity, your strength is small. But you don't have to give up. You don't have to fail. You, have to, you can build it up right now. Amen. You, it's not the size of, your, or of the stress. It's the size of your strength. Your strength needs to increase. You need to increase the capacity of your anointing. Proverbs already tell us that, you know, when we fail, when we faint, it's because our strength is small. Then Isaiah chapter 10 verse 24 tells us this. Isaiah 10, 20, 27, sorry, verse 27 says this, 
And in that day, his burden will depart from your shoulder and his yoke will from your neck and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be broken because of the fat. <laughs> Another translation said the yoke will be broken because of the anointing. You see, you want your strength to be increased, to get out from your depression in the valley. What you need to do is increase the anointing in your life. Commit to yourself to things that can increase your strength. Don't dwell on things that will deplete and drain your strength. Commit to prayer. Commit to uh, reading the Word of God. Things that will strengthen you. Cut off things that will drain you. The second key to turn around your adversity to blessing is this. Set your heart on the destination. Not in the valley, not on the valley, but in the destination. He says here in verse 5, Blessed is the man, happy is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Turn your heart to Jesus right now. Say amen. Whatever you're going through, from all the destruction, from all the sorrow and pain, turn your eyes to Jesus. Remember, He is the person that we are moving towards. He is the person that we are worshipping. A pilgrimage setting is to set our hearts on a road that will lead to God. Leads to God. Amen. We are on a journey that will lead to God. There are ways that will lead to destruction. There are ways that will lead to uh, depression and defeat. But we are on a journey that will lead ourselves. At the end, we will meet with God. That is our pilgrimage. You see, the worshipper in Psalm 84, they long to dwell in the house of God. They desire to worship with, God, uh, with the people of God in the house of God. I'll counsel you this. If you want to set your heart on the destination, don't settle in, but move towards the goal. And your goal is worship Him in spirit and in truth. Don't settle in. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 says, Set your mind on things above. above. Set your mind on heavenly things. Do not set your mind on things on earth. Depression. No. Whatsoever thing is of virtue, whatsoever thing is pure and good and right, set your mind on those things. Think on those things, Paul says. Number three, the third key to turning your adversity to blessing. I'm coming to close. This is the third one. The third key for us is to put our faith to work. James said it this way. You know, if you have faith without work, your faith is dead. Show me your work, and then I'll, I'll tell you your faith, right? So you've got to show your work. In times of depression, you say, Pastor, I'm already so depressed. How can I? No, no, no. Get yourself up. Get, you know, uh, sing another song. Call out Jesus with all the strength that you have. You've got to put your faith to work. All that you've been taught in church, in Sunday school, all that you've learned from all these uh, years of growing up in uh, the things of God, put it into work right now. Dig a well, the Bible says in verse 6, as they pass through the valley of Bacar. I've got good news for us. We're not here to stay because there's no power in staying. There's no strength in staying. There's only power in your going and in your moving forward. They say, don't stay in Bacar, but passing through Bacar, the place of sorrow and difficulties and depression, they make it a spring. Verse 6 says, they make it a spring. The rain also covers with pools. You have your part to play, and I have my part to play. Physically, I can do all I, I must do, and then God will do the rest. Amen? Do all that I must do. I can dig the well. When I go into depression and when I'm in the valley, I can dig deep into prayers. Amen? You've got a week of prayer and fasting, you know, coming up. Dig deep into prayer. When you go into depression and the times of uh, uh, the valley, Dig deep into the Word of God. I've been going to the Word of God in this season, going deep in the Word of God, praying with my wife and studying the Word of God with my wife. Go deep in the season. Do you know what happens? When you go deep, you will find spring coming out. The Bible says they work. In, notice in verse 6, they are the ones that dig the well. God didn't dig the well for them. God cannot study the Bible for you. God cannot do the prayer for you. Of course, God prayed for us. But you have to pray your own prayer. You have to pray for your family. You have to pray for your own finances. Pray for your own sickness. But you have to fellowship with God. Alright? So they dug the well. And then what happened? 
and then spring can fall. You know, there are two kinds of wells, right? There are wells that uh, in, geograph in geography we study is the well of uh, the artisan well. You dig deep enough, you know, the water will spring up. Not a dead well, but well that comes up from water from within. The Bible says in John chapter 7, verse 38, He said, The one who believes in me, Jesus said, as the scriptures say, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Come on. When you are down deep in depression, dig in the well, pray in tongues, pray in the Holy Spirit, pray, 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 dig in deep into the Word of God, and then you will find rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit will gush up from within you. Praise the Lord. And God wants to refresh you with rivers of living water. Give you life because water gives life. Say amen. Water brings life. No. Not only is that the human part, our human responsibility to dig the well, to make it a place of spring, but God's part as well. There is a divine sovereignty from God because the Bible says in verse 6, the rain also covers it with pools. Now, you, can, you and I cannot make rain. Rain always come from God. God said, if I stop the heavens and there'll be no rain, right? God can. He did it. The prophet did it. They prayed and there was no rain. And then God said, let it be rain. Let there be rain. And rain came. All right. So rain is a sovereign act from God. God sent the rain. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His goings forth is established as the morning. And he will come to us like the rain, like the ladder and the former rain, to the earth, to your depression, to your valley. Rain from heaven. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, brother and sister, listen to me. This is your season of open heaven. Everything may be shut down, locked down, and closed up. I want you to know God's heaven is not shut over your life. If God's heaven is shut over your life, you're in trouble. <laughs> God's heaven is not shut because the devil is still actively working in lives so of people, bringing people into depression. We need to pray towards heavens. Uh, someone, does, someone say, our brokenness on earth, our pain, our sorrow, our hurts on earth, our brokenness on earth create an openness in the heavens for God to reign and pour His blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see the word pools in the last, the last word, in the, I'm closing with this, uh, verse 6. The word say, the rain also cover it with pools. The rain also cover it with pools. The rain cover it with pools. The rain from heaven come down with pools. The word pools in the, uh, in the Hebrew means blessing. Okay. The Hebrew word is ba'akra. Ba'akra meaning, meaning blessing. It means prosperity. It means gifts and presents. We all love presents, especially when you have a birthday, Christmas coming, you, you know, you receive gifts and presents for yourself. We enjoy it. Do you know that in the valley of Bacar, you dig deep, you have spring coming out, rivers of living water, but then you also expect God's heavenly blessing, open heavens coming down with rain, a blessing, shower the blessing of God coming from heaven to refresh you, to refresh I, all of us. We need, a, we need to be in a place of the open heaven to receive God's refreshing in our life. It's a blessing in the valley for you. Finally, the last, the last key. I'll tell you four keys. Key number four, how to turn adversity into blessing, is to claim your victory. Claim your victory. You see in verse number 12, the scripture says, O Lord of hosts, it's so important. Over 260 times, this name of God called the Lord of hosts. It's the name of God in the Hebrews. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. The word host is translated in the Hebrew language as Shabbat. Okay, Shabbat. Shabbat means armies, armies. So, when you put together, it means the angelic armies of heaven. It means the God that we worship is the Lord of the armies of heaven. Come on. This is a season for you to open your eyes. They are more with us than, than, than with those that those are against us. Amen. We have more on our side, more angelic power, more supernatural power, all of God with us than the enemies have. This is the season to claim your victory because He is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the God of the armies of heavens. 
we are surrounded in not just by valleys and hills, but we are surrounded by the army of the Lord of hosts. And if you are surrounded by the army of the Lord of hosts, there's no way you're going to lose. There's no way you're going to be defeated. There's no way you're going to stay depressed. You're going to be so impressed. You're going to be so excited about God because you can claim your victory. You see, Psalm number 23 verse 4 say this. Though David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, then listen to what he said. David said, I fear no evil. I want you to know, why do you need the God of Sabaoth in the valley? Because there are evils in the valley. This coronavirus is from the pit of hell. It is an enemy. You ain't going to hate it with a passion, hate of passion. <laughs> We gotta hate it. There are evils, there are darkness, there are all kinds of strange things in the valley. And when you're in the valley, when you're in depression, all kinds of voices, the enemy comes in with all kinds of negative thoughts. You, that, those are evils. And those evils need to be challenged and confronted by the Lord of the armies of heavens. And you can have it in your house today. Wherever you go, wherever you are, God is the Lord of heavens. Shall we just raise our hands to the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord. Father, I pray, God, for the anointing of your people to be increased day by day. Lord, I pray, God, that the characteristic of God will, will always be imprinted into their spirit, in their hearts, in their mind, wherever they are. God, I pray, they will start using, oh God, the keys to turn God adversities into your blessing. I bless the church. I bless everyone from the young to the oldest. God, give them your peace. Anoint them that they can break forth and be victorious in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.